Hello there, good morning and welcome back to my channel. Here we've got a couple of decent sized solar panels and they're attached to new pumps. Now my solar powered hydroponic system used to be powered by a small pump which did about three four hundred liters per hour with a tiny little solar panel and unfortunately whilst it did work very well when the sun was out as soon as the sun went in it just slowed down and stopped so with a bigger panel I think this is a 10 watt panel and with a more reliable pump which pumps more water and with the battery backup which is retained underneath this panel uh, I'll show you in a moment I can run these systems a lot longer even on rainy days it doesn't really matter as long as it's light this system will run and it'll also charge the battery it's a very good system and it's currently on offer which is why I've kind of rushed this video out before I've really got any substantial plants in here okay so the panel that I've got on my left there that was from the old system and as you can see it's a hell of a lot smaller than this panel this one is a proper solar panel and if I can angle that correctly you should be able to see the little box that sits under here that sits under the panel and that's got the battery in it it's a 1500 milliamp battery and it runs the pump for approximately an hour after dark I'll just whip the pump out here let you have a look at that Okay, so that's the pump that sits in there. It's just a you know, commoner garden, ordinary looking little black pump. But it's got a little pin on the side of here. And as soon as it gets lifted out of the water, it switches the pump off so it doesn't damage the pump. So, it, you know, we, you can't pump something dry and destroy the pump when you're using this system. See that little pin? As soon as I press it, the pump comes back on. Must be something to do with the resonance going through my body. I basically detect water, so as soon as I put it in, it'll start again. There you go, all the bubbles going up there, start it up again. And that pad on top there, that actually comes with a pump, that ensures that the pump floats just below the water surface, which in a situation like this, in a water butt, that's perfect because all the muck tends to be on the bottom and I don't want to suck muck from the bottom. So in the case of that pump, it feeds up through that pipe into here. And then that flows through the pipe, uh, exits the end there. And I've cable tied it on underneath. It runs all the way back. And then it tips back into the container. Just in case anybody's interested, this pipe can't be pulled out because I've got a T piece fitted on there. So basically, what I did, I just pushed the pipe through, lifted it out of one of the holes, fitted the T piece, and pulled it all the way back. That ensures that the pump is pumping water above the level of the water in the pipe. And if for whatever reason the pump goes off, it doesn't just suck all the water out of this pipe. Because it's pretty important to retain some water in that pipe, just in case the pump goes off. Or you get exceptionally warm weather. You know, these plants don't want to get too hot. I'll just take that out, you might be able to see the water going in. Yeah, it's shimmering, but you can at least see it through. So that's one of the systems. Panel, pump, hydroponic growing system. And in this one, I'm going to put, oh, I don't know, probably cherry tomatoes or something. I've planted loads of them up and I've got some tumbling varieties. So I'm kind of hoping that they all cascade down over there and just provide me with a wall of fruit. It'll be beautiful if it works. And of course, if it does, I'll video it and I'll upload it to the Thousand Yards Stair channel. So the second system is exactly the same pump, exactly the same panel, except this one pumps to something called an ebb and flow system. Water goes in the back, just here. It fills this container up, and when it gets to a certain level, it automatically drains all the water out. So the water is constantly ebbing and flowing. 
and if you're wondering how this was made this is just two storage boxes that you would normally have like underneath your bed or something like that I just cable tied them on one side to create a bit of a hinge drilled a hole in the other side so I can lock it shut and stop it blowing open and that provides me with like a little mini greenhouse so at the minute there's 19 one litre pots of reasonably immature lettuces most of them are green some of them are red I do like to mix them up when I'm having a salad because it just looks a lot nicer because really you don't get that much taste from a lettuce so you, you may as well have your interest from the coloration of them and these pots are something called air pots as you can see they're all knobbly really weird things they actually come flat packed and you roll them up and hold them together with like a little screw in pin thing they are absolutely excellent and I don't know why I don't see more people using these things probably because of the cost of, to be honest they, they do cost more than like perforated pond baskets and all that but I, I think they're excellent and as far as the substrate goes this may be something that you're not familiar with this is actually a really tiny form of alpha grog which is a ceramic media and I find this to be much better than the standard clay balls because it's got a ridiculously big knobbly external surface area for bacteria so so these plants are sitting in what is effectively a filter for that tank and in the nutritious parts of it as well because any muck that gets pumped up settles in here the bacteria act on it to produce the nitrate which feeds the plants in a few weeks these will be up here and probably ready to harvest i've used this system last year and right through the winter and it did very well for me and we never got any bugs or pests or anything in here when the lid was on that is the cistern drainer thing it's a really something that would go in like a toilet system and when it gets up to a certain level it creates a siphon and just sucks all the water out of this container in fact it's so close to doing that I may as well just hang around and let it happen now because these roots of the plants are sitting currently in water they're getting all the nutrition they need when that all drains out they get highly aerated and then they get nutrition aeration nutrition aeration other than on night obviously but on a night the water will mostly drain out of here because i've got the input pipe going down underneath the water if i had it too high the water wouldn't drain out of here roots possibly could get waterlogged but, but in the case of the lettuce it, yeah, I mean, they'll grow just in water anyway so it wouldn't bother them but for anything else it would be best if on a night when the system switched off the water drained out here we go that's it it it'll now fill up again and the filling process probably takes uh, 15 20 minutes maybe so it takes about maybe a minute and a half to drain and 15 to 20 minutes to refill and it just repeats that cycle all day now if you didn't want to use that little pump for hydroponic systems it would be good for a wildlife pond and it'd be very good for those little wildlife pond filters that I made in a previous video I'll put the link to that in the video description I'll also put the link to the pump as well because as I mentioned before they are currently on offer on Amazon I think when I bought mine it was just around about 30 English pounds it had apparently been roughly 50 quid I think at 30 quid it's a very good deal because you get proper panel you get the battery backup and you get a pump which pumps about 500 litres per hour as well as all the cabling the thing that makes it float you know that neoprene pad thing uh, fountain attachments and all that sort of thing so it's a pretty good buy thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video